Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. So recently I compared the new AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and Intel Core i9 1200K head to head in 40 games and I found that overall they did offer a very similar gaming experience. Of course they traded blows but overall much of a muchness. Still there were plenty of really interesting data points and this motivated me to include the original 5800X and that allows us to see where that massive L3 cache is helping out. So that's what we'll be doing today. But before we do, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series of graphics cards. Now for budget conscious gamers, the Ventus series offers loads of value with a no fuss performance focused design, packing large triple fan coolers. Then for the next tier in performance and aesthetics, the gaming series offers low noise operation and eye catching LED lighting. Or for those of you after the best of the best, the Supreme series delivers uncompromising performance through state-of-the-art thermal designs, and of course, those chiseled good looks. And then all models support ray tracing and DLSS. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so on the menu today is another 40 game benchmark. Actually, this time it'll be 41 because I have been able to include a Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'll talk a bit more about that when I get to that section. Anyway, this time I will be comparing the 5800X 3D to the 5800X, and we're doing so head-to-head -head at three resolutions using the RTX 3090 Ti. Now, at this point in time, I am yet to discover just how many of these things AMD has to sell because they're yet to go on sale. They should be going on sale roughly the time this video is released and they should be made available at $450 US. I'm hearing there isn't that many of them. So if you do want one, probably best to get in uh, as early as you can. You have seen reviews and all that, so you know what you're buying. So at least there is that, but I've heard that supply is rather limited, at least for this initial wave. So we'll have to see how they go. But at that point, it still costs more than the 5800X 3D, and it's now slower. So when it comes to the ultimate gaming performance, Intel and AMD are tied. The 5800X 3D is cheaper, it's more power efficient and easier to cool, making it the more practical ultimate gaming solution. But what about those of you who want high-end gaming performance, but aren't interested in paying a premium for the ultimate in gaming performance? From Intel, you have the Core i7-12700K, which I'll be adding to this data set next. And then from AMD, there's the 5800X, which now costs just $340, and the new 5700X, which is $290. For this test, I'm only going to include the 5800X, but with a mere 2% frequency advantage over the 5700X, you can safely assume this performance is also achievable with the cheaper Ryzen 7 part. So not only are we going to take a really in-depth look at where the 3D V-Cache helps to improve performance, but we're also going to see if it's worth spending the extra 32 to 55% more on the 5800X 3D. Both CPUs have been tested using DDR4 3800 cell 16 memory with the MSI X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi. This is the highest clock memory we can use with the Ryzen 7 processor while running at a one-to-one -one ratio with the FCLK. Then the other test system notes to be aware of is the fact that resizable bar is enabled using the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. Okay, let's get into the data. Starting with Valorant, we find a solid performance uplift for the 5800X 3D, an 18% increase for the average frame rate at 1080p, and a 24% boost to the 1% lows. And similar figures are also seen at 1440p and even 4K as the game is entirely CPU limited. Frankly, I feel the 5800X is more than fast enough here, but if for whatever reason you require more performance then the 5800X 3D will probably appeal to you. We're looking at even bigger performance gains in Fortnite. Here the 5800X 3D was up to 27% faster, seen at 1080p and 1440p. Again, the 5800X was certainly very fast, but the 3D version meant that 1% lows were kept above 250 FPS. Even at 4K, the 5800X 3D was up to 19% faster, which is quite remarkable. And although most competitive players target 1080p or maybe 1440p, I certainly appreciate the boost at 4K, as this is the resolution I play Fortnite at. Call of Duty Warzone players rocking a Zen 3 processor will see quite a substantial performance uplift with the 5800X 3D when CPU bound. Here the new 3D V-Cache model was up to 26% faster, so that's in line with what we saw in Fortnite. And this margin was seen at 1080p and 1440p when looking at 1% lows, though this time the game became entirely GPU limited at 4K. 
Now, many of you were very excited to see ACC included in the previous benchmark, and yes, I will be including it moving forward. The gains here for the 5800X 3D are incredible as we're looking at an improvement in 1% lows of up to 53%, with a 43% boost to the average frame rate. And we're seeing a massive 30% improvement to 1% lows, even at 4K. So the 5800X 3D is much faster across the board than the original 5800X in this title, suggesting that this is a very cache sensitive game. As noted in the previous benchmark, City Skylines is basically a single core game, which is why we're seeing such an extreme CPU bottleneck at a relatively low frame rate. The 3D V cache does help here, boosting performance by almost 20% across the board, and you'll certainly notice this improvement. StarCraft 2 is yet another single core game, and this one runs very poorly late game, unless you have a very modern processor that is. Here we're seeing a massive 52% improvement in 1% lows for the 5800X 3D, and a 32% increase for the average frame rate. Although the 5800X was still quite good, you will notice that huge improvement with the 3D model. And this massive margin was also seen at 1440p and even at 4K, so big improvements here with the 3D V-Cache. Interestingly, very little improvement was seen in Apex Legends. At most, a 9% increase to 1% lows was seen at 1080p, with a 3% boost to the average frame rate. So for those of you primarily playing Apex Legends, the 5800X 3D isn't going to be worth the investment. The same is also true for Dying Light 2, particularly if you're playing at 1440p or higher. And especially so if you're gaming with a GPU that's slower than an RTX 3090 Ti. So while the massive 3D V cache can be of great benefit for some titles, that won't always be the case as we've seen here. The performance uplift for Rainbow Six Siege is also quite tame. Here we're looking at just a 9% boost at 1080p, followed by nothing at the GPU limited 1440p and 4K resolutions. Battlefield 5 runs significantly faster with the 5800X 3D, boosting 1% lows by 33% at 1080p, and the average frame rate by a whopping 41%. Even at 1440p, we're looking at a 30% improvement at 1% lows, and a 21% increase for the average frame rate. Then, even at 4K, we're still looking at up to a 14% boost for the 3D V cache, so quite an impressive set of results here. F1 2021 is another game, that saw strong performance gains for the 5800X 3D. This time, 1% lows were improved by 40% at 1080p, and then a more mild, but still very impressive, 17% increase for the average frame rate. Then at 1440p, the 1% lows were boosted by 22%, with just a 5% increase for the average frame rate, and then no performance gains were seen at 4K. Moving on to Halo Infinite. Here we're looking at a 35% improvement for the 1% lows at 1080p, and a 23% increase to the average frame rate. Those margins were reduced to 22% for the 1% lows and then just 6% for the average frame rate before seeing performance basically neutralized at 4K. Still, the boost from the 5800X 3D at 1080p and 1440p is quite significant as it meant 1% lows were now above 100 FPS. Even with slightly dialed down quality settings, Red Dead Redemption 2 is still mostly GPU bound, as seen at 1440p and 4K. There are some gains to be had at 1080p, where the 5800X 3D was up to 16% faster, so a good uplift there, though I suspect under most gaming conditions, there will be little to no difference between these two CPUs for this title. For whatever reason, the 1% low performance of the 5800X is quite weak in the Outer Worlds. This Unreal Engine 4 title has never played well with AMD hardware, but the 5800X 3D does go a long way towards changing that. At 1080p, the 1% lows were improved by an incredible 57% margin, and although the uplift to the average frame rate was a lot less extreme, a 22% boost is still very impressive. The margins do shrink at 1440p, and are almost entirely eliminated at 4K. The second last game that we're going to look at is Death Stranding, and again, it's the 1% lows that are improved the most with the 5800X 3D, boosting performance at 1080p by 31%, with a 14% increase to the average frame rate. The 5800X 3D remained up to 20% faster at 1440p before hitting a GPU limited brick wall at 4K. Now, for the 1200K versus 5800X 3D comparison, I didn't include Microsoft Flight Simulator because, well, I couldn't get it to work. And let me explain. On our AMD test system, the simulator worked just fine, but on the Intel system, I ran into what's known as the infinite login loop, a bug that has been widely reported on by users. And this isn't anything to do with Intel, it's not a problem with Intel or the Intel system, 
It's just, well, Microsoft kind of suck at making games or, well, a lot of things. I've tried every suggestion I could come across to fix the issue, but no joy. I simply cannot log into my account on our Intel test system. I even took to Twitter hoping someone there could help me, and Paul Alcon from Tom's Hardware said they'd had a similar issue for months now and have been unable to find a solution. So for now, I won't be able to provide any Intel results, but here is how the 5800X 3D and 5800X compare. We're looking at a 21 to 23% performance increase at 1080p, with up to an 18% boost seen at 1440p before running into a GPU bottleneck at 4K. So good gains here for the 3D vCache. Okay, so we've looked at a little over a dozen games now, but with 41 of them in total, there is a lot more data to go over. So let's take a look at the breakdown graphs, which are covering the 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions. The Ryzen 5 5800X 3D delivered on average a 15% performance bump over the original 5800X, which is quite impressive and in line with AMD's own claims. So for 41 titles, just 10 saw performance gains of 5% or less, which we deem insignificant. There were 25 examples where the performance margin was 10% or greater, and then 13 where gains exceeded 20%. That means for 32% of the titles tested, the gains were what I'd call very significant. Moving up to 1440p did reduce the margin to 9% in favour of the 5800X 3D as the testing became more GPU bound. So unless you play at low quality settings or have an extremely fast GPU, performance for the most part is going to be very similar with almost 70% of the titles tested seeing single digit gains. Then at 4K, we're almost always entirely GPU limited with the exception of just a few titles. StarCraft 2, which is now a 12 year old game, that only utilizes a single core. So even at 4K, we're still heavily CPU bound. And the same is also true of City Skylines. Valorant, on the other hand, isn't as CPU bound. It just doesn't push the graphics card very hard, shifting the limitation more towards the CPU. Then for the rest of the games, we're mostly looking at GPU limited performance. Now, before wrapping up the graphs, here's a look at the 1080p 1% low data which shows a more significant improvement for the 5800X 3D when compared to the average frame rate data that we just went over. On average, the 1% lows were improved by 22%, and we're seeing some extreme examples of 50% or greater gains in StarCraft 2 and ACC. Moreover, there are now 22 examples where the gains exceed 20%, with just a handful of titles showing single-digit gains. So the 5800X 3D isn't just enabling higher frame rates, but also smoother performance when compared to the 5800X. Certainly some very impressive gains we're seeing with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D over the original 5800X. It's clearly a much better gaming CPU, but is it worth paying more than a 30% premium for, or a little over 50% when compared to the new 5700X? As usual, that depends. It depends on the games you're playing, how you're playing them, and then what kind of performance you're after. If the goal is to simply obtain the best gaming performance possible, then yeah, the 5800X 3D will be what you're after, either that or the Core i9-12900K, though you'll have to spend quite a lot more money to obtain this level of performance with Intel. Alternatively, if you're playing games such as StarCraft 2, Watch Dogs Legion, ACC, F1 2021, Battlefield 5, and a handful of other titles that we tested, the performance gains were very significant. And if you're after more performance than the 5800X can deliver, then yeah, the 5800X 3D will be the obvious choice. But if you don't have the GPU power to take advantage of the headroom offered by the 5800X 3D, or you won't be playing games at lower quality settings, then for the most part, the 5800X 3D won't be much or possibly any faster than the 5800X, or for that matter, the newer and cheaper 5700X. In short, if your goal is to acquire maximum bang for your buck in a wide range of games, the 5800X 3D isn't really going to be the way to go. For that, the Ryzen 7 5700X or Core i7-12700F will probably offer more value, and typically I've been recommending the Core i7 part, but we'll take a good look at the 5700X soon. So while not an amazing value part, the 5800X 3D is still incredibly impressive and demonstrates just how many options AMD now has available to make their CPUs a lot faster for particular tasks, opposed to Intel, who is still largely relying on brute force, the 12900KS being a good example of this. Intel's only move here was to overclock the 12900K by 6%, resulting in overall gains of a few percent, while charging around 30% more in the process. Meanwhile, for a similar premium, AMD is delivering up to 50% more performance with 
15 to 22 percent more on average depending on the metric you look at so again a very impressive achievement there but how impressive it really ends up being will depend entirely on pricing and availability and as i mentioned at the start of the video that's something that looks a little bit sketchy at this point in time but we will have a good handle on it in the coming weeks but now though that is going to do it for this comparison Coming up next, I'll compare the 12700KF against the 5800X 3D and 5800X, and then we'll see which brand offers the best value high-end CPU for gamers. Until then, though, make sure that you are subscribed, and if you'd like to become a Hard Robux community member, then you can subscribe to either our Floatplane or Patreon accounts. Either of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server for members only. We do a live stream, Tim and I get together, and answer your questions and talk about whatever's happened during the month live. That's always a lot of fun. There's behind the scenes content, Q&A, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.